All right, let's see, is the, is the audio working? Work, okay, getting audio. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hey. So the next karaoke song will be, only a few of you know, understand that. Um, do I just need to get closer? Um, this is fine, this is fine. All right. Yeah. Ruth says, just interrupt you. So that's what I'm going to do. Can everybody hear okay? All right. Ooh. Let me turn my speakers down here. All right. Yes, no more feedback. Perfect. Um, and Apologies, I finished this uh, uh, 32 minutes ago. So it is complete, um, but uh, I didn't have enough time to play with the technology. So I'm using my phone as a notepad. And also, as most of you know, I'm happy to talk one-on-one -on -one or small groups, but standing up here, especially after four years, um, please excuse any uh, any vapor locks or, um, well, this actually. <laughs> so I guess I'll introduce myself first. Um, I'm gonna be talking about RESTful API for Evergreen. And, and you know that because you looked at the conference schedule and came here. Um, I'm Mike Rylander. I'm the research and development manager at Equinox. Uh, one of the um, original Evergreen developers. Uh, one of many, many developers now, which I'm very, very thankful for. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about um, modern APIs for Evergreen or modern dialects for APIs for Evergreen. Uh, so this is a mic presentation. That means I have to have a wall of code. Um, I'm going to try and get it out of the way now. This is... Um, a piece of the uh, implementation of the um, open API uh, um, work in progress code that that uh, we've been working on. And that's it. Questions? So thank you, Jason, for that, because I couldn't think of a good joke of my own. Um, Jason Boyer's in is two rooms down doing his own presentation right now, but uh, thanks for that. So we're going to go through rather quickly, and then hopefully we'll have some time for questions. Um, the who, how, what, why, when, or where and when uh, for RESTful APIs in Evergreen right now. And that's out of order because it doesn't make sense to talk about it in the order you normally say it that you learned about in uh, elementary school. So the who um, for the RESTful APIs that we've been working on so far. Um, Galen was working on a report for King County Library System in mid to late 2021. Uh, they wanted to know what it looks, what it would look like to put an API, uh, a, a, a modern API on top of what Evergreen functionality is available already. Uh, so he did that, and he, and as part of that, he created a a, a small example um, Swagger uh, implementation to wrap a few basic API calls that Evergreen uses all the time. Um, and then after that, um, we uh, it, it was very interesting um, little stub of, a, of a, a test of a program. And uh, I got interested in it and I grabbed it from him um, and I turned it up to 11. Um, not really, it's, it's only about a, a three or four right now, but that's where we're gonna go. We're gonna go to 11. Um, and how did, how did we do it? Well, 
I'm not a Python fan. My um, my uh, handle on most social media is space isn't syntax, but I do like the 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 um, the concept of don't repeat yourself from Python, um, and so that that's kind of the main rule when we were when I was putting together um, some extensions to what Galen had worked on. Uh, he started with uh, Mojalicious. Um, I uh, carried forward with Mojalicious, but wrapped it in Mojalicious Lite because that makes it easier to iterate quickly. Uh, we can move from that specific framework to uh, to other more robust uh, Mojalicious uh, hosting environments. But the reason we did that is that Mojalicious has plugins that let you um, present. Um, it, it does a lot of the the boring mechanical stuff for you unless you present Swagger and Open, open API uh, interfaces to your functionality uh, pretty easily. Um, we, uh, well, we, me, but we, we all, as the Evergreen community, working through me over the last few months, um, focused on uh, making sure we're reducing complexity for the client side, and ideally for the, um, the users that want to um, extend this as well, developers and uh, hopefully local um, administrators that want to make uh, new things uh, possible for integrations and whatnot. So we generate open API uh, schemas um, so that clients and consumers don't have to know about the Evergreen or the OpenSurf IDL. Um, and we transform between Evergreen's um, fairly type uh, strict, uh, strict typing of objects to JSON objects, hashes, key value pairs. Um, and we do that, we do that uh, by telling Mojalicious and open API code how to do that for us. Uh, and we get for free validation of all the input and output um, objects that uh, are more complex than a string or a number, uh, which is a, a big thing. It, it keep us safe. Um, right now we're hiding it all behind Nginx because it's really good at doing SSL and it's really good at rate limiting traffic. So, and we're our, and uh, all, pretty much all Evergreen instances are using it already. So uh, that simplifies the, the uh, API implementation. And we, I made sure that there were as minimal changes as possible to Evergreen so that this is not, um, this is not a, a, something that, because it changes the way Evergreen works, will take years and years to get in. I want to make it getting in um, based entirely on its own merits. And like I said, I, I want it to be easy for um, and admins to extend the APIs available to clients for their local needs. The what, I've been kind of saying this all along, but it's a RESTful interface for evergreen functionality. Uh, it is not intended to be a simple wrapper for the entire OpenSurf API. We could do that. We could point a program at, at running evergreen and say, figure out all the methods that exist and present them as open API. But that doesn't really, uh, that doesn't leverage the power of the, um, the shim that we're putting between the open API client and the open surf server. And there are 16,000 methods, not joking, that's not an exaggeration, in the storage service alone uh, they're all generated, but they're there, and there's no reason for us to expose those. Um, and it is targeting open API uh, three plus, so three one right now. Um, and except for the request to authenticate, all APIs are authenticated and permission restricted. So what can you do with it right now? You can authenticate users. Uh, you can at you, well, you can authenticate as a user. Um, and then as that user, you can uh, check out and renew. Uh, you can do all kinds of hold stuff. Uh, you can get your 
current circulations, your previous, your circulation history, if you've opted into that in all the same ways that Evergreen would be able to present it in the OPAC or in the staff client. Uh, you can get your own standing penalties that are available um, to, for you to see. Now, if there are private ones, the staff only ones, uh, that th this won't expose those. Um, and you can get uh, bibs, items, course materials and locations and other random little pieces of information that may be useful um, when you're building something for a patron to, to use and to, to be a patron. And why do we do it? Well, we want to integrate with stuff and nobody talks open surf. They don't, that's, uh, we, we were too early by a few years for standardized APIs on the web. Um, or that's the silver, silver lining version that I'm going with anyway. Um, so open surf is awesome and I love it and I will continue to advocate for its use and, uh, and evolution, but nobody else uses it. Um, so we need to at least have a translator somewhere, um, that, uh, that other folks can use to talk to us, um, and ask us questions. We've used it so far to create a RESTful, um, connector for viewfind, um, for Evergreen. Um, there's one for several of the other ILSs and it was actually uh, extremely easy to just take one of the existing RESTful uh, viewfind connectors for another ILS and turn it into the evergreen one because all we had to do was map the uh, the functions um, that we were exposing to the the names that we or the paths that we were calling them um, in the evergreen uh, open API spec. We'll probably be um, working on retooling the evergreen fulfillment driver to use open API as well. The main reason for that is just that the more we use the code, the less the code will be broken by bit rot over time. Um, and Equinox has been working with Aspen for uh, a bit over a year now. And we'll, we've been working on the evergreen connector for Aspen as well. Well, I, I would like to, I don't have, I don't have official uh, thumbs up or buy-in yet, but, uh, but I would like to see the Aspen uh, connector be as close to the viewfind connector as possible because they're both discovery layers and they both need to ask the same questions of Evergreen and they're both written in PHP on the front end um, where it matters for the connectors. So we should be able to do that. And where? Well, you can get the code that existed before I started working on this last night at uh, 1130. Um, at the uh, the repo link there from on GitHub, um, I used the Swagger editor. I actually found the older Swagger editor be, to be more robust than the new one that they're trying to push you to. Uh, but it's a really good open API and Swagger API um, exploration tool. And in fact, I'm going to take a little detour here just to show you a live um, Swagger editor. Um, uh, pointing at the development servers, the development servers um, RESTful API. So you can see, oh, come here. You can see there's a, a self namespace where you can authenticate. And then after you've authenticated, you can do, you can get your checkouts, you can check in stuff. Um, you can uh, patch a hold, which is updating its uh, pickup location, setting its frozen uh, frozen or thawed state. Um, you can patch yourself. Uh, so Evergreen's OPAC lets you, or when you're logged into Evergreen, your My OPAC section lets you do things like update your phone number, your email address, and that kind of stuff. You can do those, the, the things that the, um, that the, patrons are able to do in other areas we expose here as well. So this is the, the way you do, do it in open API is you pass a, uh, you use a, a, a patch um, HTTP method to pass a blob of JSON that says, here are the things I want to change. And here's my old password so you can confirm it's me. 
And then we do the same thing, the OPAC test. But we do it uh, machine friendly way. Uh, you can do holdy stuff. You can cancel holds. You can get the list of pickup locations. Uh, so you can build AP, build new interfaces on top of this. Um, there's uh, the circ tag. I I just have things a little mistagged in the um, in the code that's being read by this. So circ stuff is actually up here in the transaction area. Um, but uh, Anyway, this is this is all being driven by um, the Swagger editor, which the Open API three editor reading in the definition that's produced by the code that reads um, a little bit of configuration and the IDL and says, "Here's how you build a user object and stuff like that." So this is a handy tool. Um, Let's go back to, um, and then there's a link to the open API specification and um, I'll, I will put some more resources in the readme for the code that's linked on, uh, linked um, there in that first link um, pretty soon. So when are, when, uh, when are we gonna see this? Um, speaker notes, watch Mike attempt to run sequence live. All right. So that requisite wall of code that I showed earlier, I said there would be something interesting to see and checking in, checking out, uh, authenticating, meh. I mean, you need to be able to do those things, but it's not really interesting um to me anyway that's kind of the bread and butter of the ILS but I have been working on some interesting things over the last few years and one thing that I find interesting uh, or found interesting to work on and we recently um fixed for a security reason was the um search highlight a search result highlighting functionality in Evergreen so I thought hey why don't we Go ahead and add an open open API method to do the highlighting of display fields coming from sorry I'm typing in coming from a search result, um, but over open API and and I'm, it's it's going to cut off just the top because it's not, there's not a lot to see. Uh, let's make it bigger. There. So here we see I asked it to give me the display fields and highlight swordman, swordsman um, anywhere it finds in field 31, which I happen to know is the title. And there it did that. You can see the highlight version, and then here's the non-highlighted version. So you can ask Evergreen now. You now with this code, you can ask Evergreen to um, to provide you with an HTML enhanced set of the display fields, which are the that's the set of data we use to draw the record um, in most places, search results in the staff client. Um, Anywhere that it's that we don't need the full mark, we generally use the display fields. Now you can ask Evergreen to do the same thing it does in search, but just on a per record basis. If you have a reason to highlight particular words in a, in the records that you're looking at in your fancy new bespoke interface that you've built um, as an open API uh, client to Evergreen. And that code I wrote last night at about 1.30 in the morning. Um, the difficult part, it, well, all this on the left, uh, everything on the left side there is essentially boilerplate, but 
it's configuration for the for how you expose the logic on the evergreen side through open api and the piece on the right is the uh, that's all you need in order to um have full fully input and output validated um open api to open surf uh wrapping of of logic not just a function but of logic uh, more broadly um and uh the code takes care of all of the complexity of translating between the uh the two environments um that are very much not uh related to each other or don't don't understand would not understand each other um, without a little bit of glue so that's all the glue you need um that's my last slide like i said finished it one hour out nope 57 minutes ago any questions comments concerns yes jason is this meant to be For the recording, is this a separate add-on or are we going to try and push this into the code base? I don't have a particularly strong opinion on it, but I think that it would be long to, if if the community agree, agrees that open API is the is is a net positive way to expose evergreen functionality to other systems long term i think getting into the repo would uh, into the main code base uh, would make sense and would uh, would mean that more eyes are looking at it and making sure that it isn't broken by changes to evergreen or vice versa and for the sake of the record i think it's a good idea for the recording and the record jason agrees <laughs> We have a second. <laughs> All right, any other questions? I can just scroll through the code for the next four and a half minutes if you want. <laughs> yes, sorry. Oh, so I, I, you want me to go back to, so I was doing that on the command line just because the easiest way to test this for me was to use curl um to talk directly to the web server so let's put it towards the top um so it's behind an nginx server which is why i'm talking to localhost and why i'm not talking i'm not talking to it to it uh, over https because i'm letting nginx do that um and over localhost because nginx does the outside uh, version uh, the authentication occurs. Uh, it, it, this is all part of the Open API spec, but you you can pass a basic auth header, an authorization header for basic authentication with your credentials embedded in it. Um, there, this is just uh, base sixty four encoded um, user colon pass username colon password, um, and with the specific path of um, self auth, it's authenticating this user, creating a, an evergreen auth token and then passing that auth token back as the result. Um, you've got the result is this uh, this JSON, the, the entire body of the response that came back from the web server was the this um, token key and then the um, the authors the authentication hash that you get back um the auth the auth token that you get back um to say this is my session id basically and then i copied that into the i, I it's set up so that it can use cgi parameter um bearer header uh, and um a cookie so you can use any of those three you can pass your authorization token back to the to the server um your your session id basically you can go back um several ways the easiest way to do it on the command line is with a cgi parameter but you can pass it uh, a couple other ways as well does that answer your question 
Uh, it's uh, as long as it would have lasted if you logged into the OPAC. There are what we have. Uh, I, we I keep saying we, uh, the royal we. We have plans um, to um, to use uh, the variant password functionality that Evergreen has and is not in use yet. But uh, I, I want to make use of that to create a, a an entirely separate credential set for API access, if you want, you can, it'll be configurable, it'll be, you know, um, you can, you can set for the instance of Evergreen, what is your, what, what's the password type you want for authentication for APIs, and then um, it'll default to main, which is the, the one that you have when you're a user. Um, also thinking about maybe having a, a separate thing that's not an actor user row be the um, the user side of the credential piece, um, but in the end, what we want, what I what we what I want to do is make sure that you can add permissions that make sense to you to the system, apply them to each API uh, registration, and then the user has to have that permission in order to use that API uh, endpoint. Did I see another hand? Sorry. Right. Yes. I'm kind of curious as the API. So I think that this could be potentially good for the blockers we've been having uh, on this thing, but it's just the anonymizing of the content. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if um, you would have to look at the API directly to do that. So the, one way to do that, you mean like this is about question about anonymizing data. This is is if you're if you're talking to a vendor and you don't want to give them all of a user's data just because they need to know their first name to put it in an email or something. So uh, that's that that's really easy to do. We just add a new API method, but this would be so. The, what's here now is. I as as me am logging in and asking for my information. So it's probably going to be a new a, a new entry point that a new a whole new API set that a vendor would use to get um, patron information based on I don't know barcode or something. Um, but they would, uh, or maybe maybe username and password if if they're looking up information. Um, but if they want to look up information, they'd have to know some. Something about the user, ID, barcode, username, password, something. Um, but you can, it it will be, it is simple to add an, a, a method that um, on the way out the door or just chops out most of the data in the object when, it, when it's going out and you can decide what you want that to be. Jeff, you had a, did you have another? Yes, and and the persist mechanism would work as well. Yeah, the existing persist me mechanism. All right. That I actually use up most of the time, most of it, yeah. Any more questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, tomatoes? <laughs> no? All right. Well, thank you, everybody.